like to welcome everyone in the room and those participating online as I call to order this meeting of the Bellbrook Sugar Creek Board of Education for the purpose of conducting the school district's business. We value everyone's input and have made sure to dedicate a portion of this meeting to hear from you. We look forward to your comments during that time as indicated on the agenda. Mr. Liming, please call the roll. Mrs. Anderson? Here. Mrs. Dorn? Here. Mr. Kinsey? Present. Mr. Price is absent. And Dr. Pryor? Present. All right, we have a quorum. Uh, if you are able, will you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, Mr. Liming with the Treasurer's Report. Okay, could I get a motion to approve the tax rates? So moved. Second. Mrs. Dorn and then Mrs. Anderson. Uh, right, these are the same uh, tax rates that we approved, I believe, in December, but the uh, county auditor, I guess, a couple times a year has to have this approval, so there's no change in the millage rates on these. Please call the roll. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. And Dr. Pryor? Yes. Can I get a motion to approve an amendment to the 23-24 uh, permanent appropriations uh, in the amount of uh, $1,205.64? So moved. Second. Dr. Pryor and then Mrs. Anderson? And this is only because we had one federal fund that changed, increased their allocation and we have to appropriate the amount. Questions? Please call the roll. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Dr. Pryor? Yes. And Mrs. Anderson? Yes. I think that's all of mine. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, that takes us into correspondence. Does anybody have anything that they would like to share with the rest of the board? I have some happy correspondence. Please. I pick up three to four boys at the middle school most days, and today they got in the car so excited and happy, and they had the best day, and they had a wonderful substitute teacher they love so much, Mr. Millhouse, and he's so cool, and they just talked about him the whole way home in the car. Some sort of fancy handshakes, I'm not sure, but anyway, I don't know who Mr. Millhouse is, but thank you for subbing for us, and uh, keep up the good work. Very good. That is some happy correspondence. <laughs> Anybody else? All right, then we will move into reports to the board. So we would like to welcome at this time uh, Mr. Romali. Thank you so much for being here and for all that you do. You can let, let us, us know what's going on at the Green County Center. To so your green light, can everyone hear me? Is this okay? Um, uh, first of all, thank you uh, for allowing me to serve uh, as the school board representative from Bellbrook at the uh, Green County Career Center. I really appreciate it and I do enjoy the opportunity. So uh, first, uh, we had 50 Bellbrook students who made the honor roll the second semester out at the uh, Career Center, which was outstanding. You know, it's good, uh, it's good representation of, you know, the work that the students do and how hard they work. And I have had the privilege of seeing several Bellbrook students uh, at each school board meeting, they'll bring some of the students in from the various sections who have either gone to a state or regional competition, things like that. And so the Bellbrook students are well represented and doing well there. So it's, it's been neat to see. Um, another thing that happened just before Christmas, um, the governor's wife requested that the uh, Greene County Career Center, uh, the culinary arts program make cookies for the women's uh, prison in Marysville. So the students uh, made 600 cookies and took them out there. And uh, so it was a good community service opportunity for the students. Uh, coming up, the open house for the next year's students and parents, and if anybody wants to go out there, will be uh, February 29th. Uh, if you haven't been out there, it's a beautiful facility. I encourage everybody to go out and see it. Uh, on March 7th, uh, for the school board, uh, the Greene County Career Center is hosting the Ohio School Board Association Spring Conference, Southwest Region Spring Conference, and it is at the Career Center. Uh, dinner will be at 5.30, or excuse me, 
uh, registration and networking, social hour will be there at 5.30, dinner will be served at 6.30 with the program uh, following, should be done around 8.30. So it's a good opportunity if you wanted to go out there and see it, enjoy the food, see the opportunities, um, just see, uh, have a first-hand view of the school. Uh, March 25th will be spring break for the Career Center, uh, and then May 14th will be the Senior Recognition Ceremony at the Nutter Center again, so that's traditionally where they've held it. So we'll be there. That's a Tuesday, May 14th. That's all I have, unless there are questions. Seeing none. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate Thank it. You. All right, moving to our next reports to the board. A uh, chance for us to talk about some board committees and share some information. Looks like I'm first with the uh, OSBA legislative update. Um, just got a couple things here, kind of in no particular order. Uh, and I, I try to only mention things that are a little bit further along. There, there's a lot of stuff that gets introduced or might die in committee or something. Um, first thing here, Senate Bill 17. Uh, this is something that the House has already passed, so it's now in the Senate. Uh, it started in the Senate, it's going back there for concurrence because they made some changes. Uh, and it's gonna require a couple updates to curriculum for financial literacy and entrepreneurship. <clears throat> if you want more details on that, kind of let me know or I can point you to something. Uh, next, this isn't necessarily legislative, but it's of interest. Uh, Governor DeWine uh, put together a school bus safety working group and a couple weeks back, a couple months back, they came back with some of their recommendations. There are like 25 of them. Um, good stuff. Um, the, the number one on their list, I, I don't know if it was number one on purpose, but I would assume so, being it number one. Uh, encourage bus drivers to participate in professional development opportunities. I know that that is something that we do here, but that's something we can uh, be thinking about. Um, this is much further down on the list, but it's related. This was number 14 on their list that, uh, just reading here, school districts should engage school bus drivers in critical incident response planning and include them in realistic scenario-based critical incident exercises. So that might be something to consider. I know that um, there was a couple folks at the last OSBA conference that um, offer training like that. Um, I have some notes from that if we're interested, but I don't know if they do like, um, or if they could participate. I know we regularly do like stop the bleed or you know, that kind of thing. That might be really good if there's a, unfortunately a vehicle crash or something, uh, how to slap on a tourniquet's a pretty good thing to know. Just, just some thoughts or ideas. Yep, we did an incident training a couple years ago. Cool. So it's been a few years ago and they participated in, in the Stop the Bleed. Great. This past fall on opening, there's a few opening days there. Yep. Excellent to hear, thank you. Uh, next, uh, House Bill 214. <coughs> this has passed the House and it's in the Senate now being considered. Um, so if it were to become law, within 90 days from an effective date, uh, this would be a mandate on school board policy. Um, so I'm sure Neola would be all over it, but um, specifically the law says that each local school board must adopt a policy and it must include the language that the school, and I'm quoting here, the school district will not solicit or require an employee, student, or anyone seeking employment or academic admission to support or opine about specific beliefs, affiliations, ideals, or principles concerning political movements, ideology, or social action. Um, so that's something it, it has to have in there if it becomes law, if it passes. Um, what specifically says it does not prohibit, I think this is important here, what it would not prohibit if it became law um, would be an educator's academic freedom an educator's ability to teach, research, or write publications about spe specific beliefs, affiliations, ideals, or principles concerning political movements, ideology, or social action, a school district's authority to consider an applicant for employment, scholarship, teaching, or subject matter expertise in the applicant's given academic field. That's all I have. Post-secondary, secondary, is that apply to universities and um, lower ed, do you know? I, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Uh, you, I, I can look. The language I have, which I'm quoting, says the school district. Okay. So I'm guessing not, or it would probably <laughs> say the school district or a higher learning. But I can look into that and let you know. 
I can, I can look it up. It's fine. Thanks. That was uh, House Bill 214. It passed the House. It's in the Senate, so it's you know not imminent or anything. Any other questions? Okay, next on our list for the OSBA Capital Conference and Student Achievement, Mrs. Anderson. Um, the only thing that was sent out was um, about the California lawsuit um, that was just recently done as far as student achievement and um, the growth or lack of growth during COVID shutdowns. Um, the state of California now has to pay $2 billion to students hurt by pandemic shutdowns to school districts in order to catch them up. Um, there was a, a little blurb at the end of the article that said they wonder that this would be precedent in other states. Obviously, from the data that I, is available to me and from what our staff has said, I don't feel like academics are suffering as much as in other areas. So I feel like we have done a good job closing that. But I just thought that was interesting that this could roll out to many different states. So that was all. Thank you. Uh, up next, BSCF for Dr. Pryor. I am the new, um, a new member of BSCF, but they have not had a meeting yet since I've been on the board, so I don't have anything to report other than they would really like more members. So if anyone is interested in the um, Bellbrook Sugar Creek Educational Foundation, they would love more members. Okay. Up next, the Financial Advisory and Safety Committee, which Mr. Price is on. Um, safety committee is not met in a little bit, but the financial advisory committee, any, anything else to share? Um, that, so that's a combined group, financial and superintendent advisory and financial advisory group. So we covered uh, district goals that we just uh, are implementing in the process of implementing. And then we talked about the five-year forecast. Uh, Mr. Lyman, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that. I mean, those were the two main talking points of, right. of that. Right, and that group will also be uh, <coughs> reviewing audit findings and things like that when the time comes, yeah. and some other financial findings. All right, and last on our list is the Active Shooter Response Team Implementation Committee, which is myself and Mrs. Dorn. Um, we did have one meeting recently. I know you were uh, on travel, you can be there. Uh, I don't really have too much to report other than things are going exceptionally well. Um, you know, I, I think it was, I don't know, mid-November, late November, I did a pretty in-depth presentation on what um, the contents of the training was for, for the team. If you have other ideas or other thoughts of what might be interesting or, or helpful, a presentation like that, let me know. Um, but one thing I, I did think to mention is that it occurred to me, uh, Mrs. Sigmund was at our last meeting here recently, and with her uh, retirement, which we're all not happy with, um, that might leave a spot. So I don't know if we want to consider seeing if other people are interested in um, mm -hmm. filling that spot. And, and I don't know how to best do that or whatnot, but maybe just something, if you don't mind, Dr. Kozad, to think about and yep. for the future. Yep, continue to think about that. Yeah. Whether it's new manager business or somebody else in the district, yep. that would be helpful to get somebody else on there. Okay. We'll start thinking about that. Definitely. All right. Yep. And that's all I have. Uh, anything from anyone else? Okay, so that closes our board committee reports and our reports to the board. Um, so up next on our agenda, uh, I am going to make a motion. I'm going to move uh, that we move to executive session for the purpose of considering the employment, dismissal, discipline, or compensation of a public employee per RC 121.22. Uh, does somebody want to second my motion? Second. Okay, seconded by Mrs. Anderson. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lyman, please call the roll. Dr. Pryor? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. So we are in executive session at 7.15.
All right, we are out of executive session at 7.58 p.m. Let me find my spot here. Uh, I believe we're into open communication, is that right? Yes. Number six, all right. Uh, okay. Is it out there? I, I, oh, you yeah, got it, I'm sorry, right here, right in front of my face. All right. Um, Uh, your thoughts and comments are very welcome during this time. When given the floor, please share your name, address, and any group affiliation you hold if it's relevant. You'll then have five minutes for your comments, which should be directed toward the presiding officer, who tonight happens to be me. This time is for the board to listen and absorb. As such, traditionally, a dialogue is not created in this moment. In case you're wondering, the reason for these policies, which can be read in their entirety on the district's website in policy number 169.91, is to ensure that as many people as possible have the opportunity to speak and that everyone is treated equally and fairly. So we would like to welcome Meredith Brinegar. Uh, if, if you want, you can go over there, but wherever you're comfortable. Thank you so much for being here, we appreciate it. And whenever you're ready, you have five minutes. All right, my name is Meredith Brinegar and I live in Bellbrook. Um, I'm here tonight to talk about proposed state legislation that has a direct impact on K-12 schools. I had originally planned to focus on the proposed elimination of the state income tax, but when I learned about a recent tragic student death in Oklahoma, I decided to also talk about HB 183. HB 183 requires all Ohio schools, K-12 and higher ed, to segregate bathrooms on the basis of, quote, biological sex. It is still in committee, but has had several hearings. Now, it could be argued that the nationwide assault on the LGBTQ community and the myriad of proposed and passed legislation in the last two years is simply a rallying cry for the far right and a, a tool to sow division. Except this is more than an ideological debate. Laws and policies have real consequences. Recently in Oklahoma, a non-binary student was physically assaulted in a school bathroom and died the next day. Oklahoma, a state that enacted a law for single-sex bathrooms in 2022, and I should note this student, the, the student's mother reported the student was the victim of bullying related to their gender identity. Now the cause of death is still pending, but it's hard to fathom that the two events are not related. For all the rhetoric about protecting our girls and women, what about protecting our students who are most at risk? Those who don't identify as straight or cisgender. It seems we hypersexualize individuals in the LGBTQ community. We somehow think they are more likely to sexually or physically assault fellow bathroom goers. Research shows that non-binary and transgender students are more likely to be victims than aggressors. We don't need a tragedy like what happened in Oklahoma to happen here in Ohio. Now I'm hopeful that the second piece of proposed legislation may be less divisive. Maybe not though, I don't know, we'll see. It's related to state funding. Now, I appreciate the brief discussion that the board had on this topic at their retreat last month. Um, both Dr. Kozad and Mr. Kinsey have said that they have spoken with our state rep and senator about school funding. I'm curious how they've responded. Has it been more than platitudes? Do they offer solutions and a willingness to fix school funding? Because I'm concerned that our very own state rep, Brian Lampton, is a co-sponsor of HB 386 which seeks to phase out the state income tax and to eliminate the commercial activity tax. The projected revenue loss is estimated to be between 10 and 13 billion, depending on the source you read. Um, so how does the state intend to make up for this? Well, they say it seems to be in the form of a sales tax, and I guess the idea falls under the trickle-down economics. Businesses get tax breaks, they all get raises, and their employees will spend more. A concept with appeal in theory, but one that hasn't typically played out in practice. What we do know is that funding via sales tax disproportionately hurts lower and middle income Ohioans and retirees. So will it, in the next question, will an increase in sales tax be enough? Some critics, myself included, worry that the state is simply kicking the can down the road. My fear is that local municipalities and school districts will have to make up for the lost revenue through new property tax levies. And we already know how our community feels about property taxes. Um, when I called Brian Lampton's office, I voiced this concern to his aide. He assured me that the intent wasn't to take money from public schools. I said that may not be their intent to do this, but I, I fear it could be an unintended consequence. 
His aide said a fiscal comparison report has not yet been released. I mean, this has been in the last just couple of weeks that this has come out, I think the end of January. Now, other states have tried eliminating income tax. Kansas eliminated theirs in 2012 and later reinstated it in 2017 when they, uh, after losing hundreds of millions of dollars. Other states have had more success relying on solely on sales tax, but my understanding is they tend to be warm weather states that have significant sources of revenue. I think it's like gambling in, in Nevada and Disney in Florida and oil in Texas. Now, Lampton's aid did mention, quote, natural resources as a source of replacement revenue alongside sales tax, but it's unclear what that means. Um, I hope that school board members, administrators, and any community members listening to this will press Representative Lampton on these details. Further, our current Senator Bob Hackett will not be running again due to redistricting, and the Senate has a kind of a companion bill. They, they, the House and the Senate have different rates at which they are, are gonna phase out this income tax. Um, so Bob Hackett's not running again because of the redistricting. Carolyn DeStephanie, a current Sugar Creek Township trustee, is running in March as the Republican, um, or she's running in the March Republican primary for state Senate. Be sure to ask her and her opponent, Kyle Kaler, their thoughts on HB 386 before voting on March 19th. I equally encourage you to ask about school funding to the Democratic candidate, Dan McGregor, who will face the Republican winner in November. I hope that school funding, which is around $11 billion of the state budget, is something we can all work on together to change uh, school funding for the better. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Appreciate it. All right, that brings us to the end of our list. So we will close public comment for tonight. And to the superintendent's report. Yep, so this is a consent agenda for new business. Um, so 7A, B and C. A, certificate of license, employment, resignation, leave of absence, supplemental duty. And then B, support staff, employment, res resignation, leave of absence. And then C, central office, employment, resignation, leave of absence. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Dorn, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Dr. Pryor. Just wanna highlight two things here. Um, Mrs. Metzler uh, is retiring at the end of this school year. So second grade teacher here for many years. So um, congrats to her, she will be missed. And then we have a new EMIS coordinator on Lexi Banks uh, will start on March 6th, so she comes to us uh, from uh, uh, Dayton Public as uh, in their special ed department, works a lot with EMIS in their special ed department. So uh, she's finishing up there and she will be, um, she'll be starting here on the March 6th, so welcome, welcome to her. So there's two highlights. Okay. Okay. Any questions on tonight's consent agenda? Mr. Liming, please call the roll. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Dr. Pryor? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Okay. That takes us into number eight. Other action items? Yes. Um, actually, I forgot to add D for the consent agenda, so can we do substitute employment? I'm, I apologize. I did not say D. So this would be a separate vote on 7D, substitute employment. I apologize. So I'll make a motion to approve 7D. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mrs. Dorn. Okay, call the roll on 7D only, please. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Dr. Pryor? Yes. All right, sorry about that. That's all right. Um, revised job description, so this is a second read. Uh, this was uh, at the last uh, board meeting, and so the, uh, I did a couple uh, changes from the last meeting based on some suggestions and thoughts from the last meeting. The EMIS, uh, uh, the EMIS job description did not change, but the certified school nurse, so, um, we, I added uh, the qualifications on currently enrolled in a school nursing program and completed within two years of hire. That is a new piece. And then uh, deleted on page two, the second bullet point on responsibilities. I deleted out the school physician. 
as a piece there. And then on, it says page three of five, job description, that third bullet, actually it's a second bullet, I uh, deleted that out and added in, uh, it's, it's very similar, but the new bullet point mirrors what is in our board policy on communicable diseases. So it, it is uh, much more in tune, uh, word for word, uh, to, to coexist and align with that. Um, and then um, the rest of that is, is the same. And then manager of business, again, based on some feedback, re, uh, reworked number 12 under personnel functions. Again, the intent was the same, that this person uh, is taking on uh, district representative responsibility for out of, uh, out of district uh, special ed students. However, is uh, their director of special ed is still in, obviously actually in charge of those whole situations. They're just serving as the district rep. So uh, those changes were based on some feedback from the last meeting. So I hope those are um, satisfactory um, for those particular pieces. I read it all over earlier. It looks good. Okay. <laughs> and for the, can we ask questions? Sure. Well, let, let's get a motion okay. and a second. I'm sorry. Yes, that's I went right. that whole uh, thing that's there. That's okay. I apologize. Yep. Can we get a motion to approve the revisions to the job descriptions? <coughs> yep. So moved. Second. Mrs. Dorn and then Mrs. Anderson. Yep. I what questions do you have? Um, so for number two, I know there was a, a question about, like, did we make sure we consulted Tabitha? You said that we for the nurse? Yes. Correct. Yep. Okay, perfect. I did. Thank yep. you. Yep. Thank you so much. I apologize for not mentioning it, but yes. I That's did. okay. I just wanted to be sure. Yep. I did. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, please call the roll on revisions to the job descriptions. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Dr. Pryor? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, out of state travel for Winter Guard and the BHS drone team. Do a first and second. Oh. Would somebody like to move? So move. Okay, I, I think I heard. Okay, moved by Mrs. Dorn, please, and seconded by Mrs. Anderson. Okay, all right, thank you. So the high school Winter Guard, um, this uh, was last weekend to Indiana, and then the drone team is to San Diego, California in April to compete in the exponential competition there. Um, cost of district includes two sub teachers for four days, advisor tra travel room board, federal grant monies will be utilized to help defer advisor cost. So moved. I think we got a motion and we have a second. We're good, no, that's all right. Uh, so any questions on that? Sounds like a fun trip. Yeah. I just have to say, if you haven't watched the high school senior drone video, they made the most awesome video ever. Mm -hmm. It's like a real movie. It, it's quite incredible. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend that. <laughs> All right, please call the roll. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. Dr. Pryor? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Uh, anything else, sir? Nope, that'll be it. All right, uh, any items for discussion for the good of the board? Okay, then I am making a motion to adjourn for the night. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Dorn. Please call the roll. Dr. Pryor? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Dorn? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? Yes. We are adjourned at 8.12 p.m. Thank you very much for coming, everybody. <laughs>